are at Internet and we're coming around to Rotorua. We are now heading to Taihape and all points in between. Who knows what adventures we'll do today. So we are at Te Kohatu or Hatu Patu, which is Hatu Patu Rock. We are here because I remember coming here as a child when we used to drive up to Auckland to see my grandparents. And back then it was literally just a car park with a rock on the side of the road. So when I saw that it was in the vicinity, I had a look on Google Maps and it looked like they'd done some cool stuff. And so I wanted to come back. So who's Hatu Patu and why is there fruit in the rock? So Hatupatu was one of the Te Arawa ancestors. He came over on the Te Arawa Waka in about 1300. And there's lots of stories about him. So the one about the rock is that um, he had escaped after his brothers killed him <laughs> and hid him in a, in a shallow grave. And then his parents got a bit worried and they sent a, some kind of insect to check on him and that revived him. And then he was trying to get back home. He came across a woman whose name I have forgotten right now, so you're going to have to put it in a post-production, who was an expert cloak weaver. And he stayed with her for a little bit. He stole some of her cloaks and she had a whole lot of pet birds and lizards and he had sealed them up so they wouldn't escape. But one of them got out. I think it was a riro riro. And so the riro riro warned the women and she came and was following him and he found this cool rock here and he hid inside of it and he closed it around him. He's a good coming here. And once he was pretty sure she had gone, he opened it up again, and then he was going back to where we've come from, to Rotorua. He was going through the Whakarewarewa forest, which is part of where we have come from, which is quite geothermal. And because he was from that area, he knew where the, where the paths were, but because she did not, he was able to get through and she fell into a boiling <laughs> pool. <laughs> Just like terrible way to die. Yeah. And so that is why Te Arawa have quite famous cloaks, is because of this of the cloaks that he stole from her and then brought back. And the offerings. Oh, and the and offerings the are so local people will stop here on a trip. And uh, give him, give Hatu Patu an offering for a safe passage. Cool. So greenery, fruit is obviously a thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. This is the lava glass sculpture gardens.
is Hooker Falls. It might not seem a particularly impressive waterfall in terms of height, but the sheer volume and force of the water being pushed through this narrow channel by the huge weight of Lake Taupo behind it is incredibly impressive. Like many New Zealanders of my age, Hooker Falls is always linked in my mind with the death in 1989 of Peter Plumley Walker whose body was dumped into the falls after a bondage session went wrong. Plumley Walker's death was eventually ruled accidental, but first there was a murder case. That was the stuff of tabloid editors' dreams, because it featured prostitution, a teenage dominatrix, BDSM... Yeah, you get the picture. When I saw we were passing near Hooker Falls, I said we had to stop just because of those stories but I'm so glad we did because this is so impressive you cannot imagine the force of it until you're here seeing it in person the water is just moving so fast and there's so much of it no wonder it seemed like a good place to dump a body Giant's Garden. This is Latte, which is in Topo. <laughs> something you don't see every day <laughs> we thought it might be floods from the recent rains but apparently it was flooded quite some time ago and the farmer was struggling with his insurance company to get a payout for it so by the time he actually won he couldn't be bothered like actually draining the valley so he just left it as it was and spent the money on a holiday home which why wouldn't you <laughs> staying tonight been somewhere really impressive for our last night we're about to go 
and here's a dinner which we don't know what it's going to be but apparently it's all cooked out of the gardens here so it's going to be special and then the sparkle's free after dinner so you know <laughs> Yeah we're internet we're in River Valley near Taihape and this is where we spent the night last night at a lovely little lodge at the end of a very long series of increasingly small country roads and then a very 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 long driveway we are literally in the middle of nowhere and we had a fantastic dinner last night that was a farm to table you know the chef decides what you're going to eat type thing it was so so good and then at night we're the only guests so we had the whole place to ourselves including the outdoor spa pool where we sat in the rain in the spa pool listening to the moorport calling in the trees and we even saw a moorport chasing moths which was so cool i've like i've only seen them in like you know zoo type areas before i've never actually seen one in the wild, let alone one in the wild. I've heard them in the wild lots of times, but I've never actually seen one. And I've definitely never seen one hunting. That was so amazing. And the moths were flying around our heads because we were by the light. So the moorpot was like coming in right on over our heads trying to get the moths. It was a very exciting time. It was, it was a great night. So we're going to have breakfast to have a little look around here. And then it's back to Wellington. <laughs> but does it taste good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. This is the Rangitiki River possibly. I don't think it has the same name here though, but it is the only Tiki further down I think. This is the garden our dinner came from last night. Flooded river. And this is an old bridge. It, there's not a driving cars down bridge anymore because it feels kind of wobbly underfoot. <laughs> been replaced by a new bridge. And some really impressive cliffs. These cliffs are called the Ruahine Dress Circle because the early European settlers thought it looked like the dress circle in an opera.
think there's a bit more water going through here than there would be normally, but as long as we're careful, we should be okay. <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't have to go too far into the Yeah, wind, yeah. Right? Exactly. We decided in the end the water was too high to safely go into the caves, so we only made it to the entrance. So we didn't get to see the glowworms, but the little bit of the cave we did get to see looked really nice. I bet it would be amazing in good weather. My ankles are so cold right now. And then we drove back to Wellington and that was the end of our road trip. There will be more videos to come of particular highlights along the way but this is the last of the vloggy type videos for this road trip. I hope you enjoyed coming along on our little adventure. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment and I will see you next time. Ka kite anō, internet. We are here because I remember coming up here when I was a child like a whole row of trucks about to come past. <laughs>